Hello everyone, I'm Jacob Kaufman, I'm the Run of the Street, and today we are taking a look at the latest version of Elementary OS. So Elementary OS is a Linux distribution based on Ubuntu. It's designed to be very, very easy for new users to use to figure out, and it's also designed to be very... Uh, well designed centric. It's supposed to look really nice, it's supposed to perform really nice. Sort of like Mac OS, Elementary OS is supposed to have a really good handle on aesthetics. It's supposed to have a lot of focus put toward making things look good, not just work good, but also just look good. And that involves both graphics and animations, and it does to a certain extent involve how well it actually works. So it's been in development for quite a while, even though it's only at version 0.3, this is a major release, and the developers have been polishing this for quite a while. So I've been really excited to try out the new version. The old version was called Luna. This version, like I said, it's called Freya. And yeah, I've been waiting for this new version to come out before I try it, but I may end up actually using this as a day-to-day -day operating system for a while on my computer because there's some software that I'm kind of trying to use that is made specifically for Ubuntu. I'm not going to go into that right now, but like I said, Elementary OS is based off of Ubuntu 14.04 LTS, so any software that works on Ubuntu will also work on Elementary OS. But yeah, anyway, we're going to take a look at the latest version, and this is installing Elementary OS. Alright, hopefully I cut down that background noise a little bit, but here we are on the desktop, and this is the website for Elementary OS. So you can see their logo up here, and this is a brand new website that they released. It's actually, they've had the website online for a while at beta.elementary.io, but now it's just the default homepage at their website, which like I said is elementary.io. So the new website showcases Elementary OS, a fast and open replacement for Windows and OS X. Now because this is supposed to be very simple and easy for new users to pick up, they don't actually mention the word Linux anywhere on their page. Well, they do down here. They do mention the word Linux on their page, but they don't, you know, showcase it. They want this to feel like its own experience. They don't want users to think, oh, it's a Linux distribution, it's going to be hard to use. No, Elementary OS is supposed to be easy to use, it's supposed to look very nice. You can see um, they have some of their own apps that they develop in-house, so they have their own Photos app, um, their own music app, although I think that those may be based on other open source projects. Their videos app, once again, I think that they do have their own technically videos app, but it may be based on just GNOME videos. So Elementary OS has its own desktop environment called Pantheon, and Pantheon is a fork of GNOME. It's not just an extension of GNOME. It's not a layer over GNOME, it is actually a fork, a complete fork. So yeah, it is similar to GNOME in some ways, but at this point, it's being developed entirely separately from GNOME. So yeah, you probably want to actually see the operating system and not just the screenshots. So, you can see here, by default, you have three price options, $10, $25, and $50. And if you click download, you're going to get something asking for a credit card and the reason that I don't like this is because I'm all for donating to open source projects but you know there's gonna be some poor grandma somewhere or somebody who doesn't know what they're doing with computers they're going to go here they're going to click download and they're going to put in their card number and pay because they don't know that they don't have to you probably want to try elementary OS before you pay them so what you can do is click on this custom option here just enter zero into that box. Then when you click download, here we go. We can download 32-bit or 64-bit, and we can download direct files, or we can download torrent files. I'm going to download the direct one for now, although if I like it, I may seed the torrent later. So it's hosted on SourceForge, it looks like. Waiting for SourceForge. That's taking unusually long. SourceForge.net. Is SourceForge down? No, SourceForge is up. Let's try that again. All right, there we go. Just had to click on the link again. So now your download will start, and you know, this is a standard SourceForge download. And it looks like the download clock's in at 852 megabytes. That is a shame, because the cutoff limit for CDs is 700 megabytes. So your file has to be under 700 megabytes to put this on a CD. If it's bigger than that, you have to use a DVD. And DVDs can store up to 4.7 gigabytes, so they might as well have included more if it's going to be 
not able to fit on a CD. Of course, at this point, I usually use USB flash drives. I don't usually use CDs or DVDs anyway, but I still like it when distributions are able to be fit on CDs, and this one is not. So I'll go ahead and stop talking, and I'll just let you know when this is done downloading. All right, and that is completed downloading. So it's an ISO file, like I said. Let me go ahead and get a VirtualBox machine ready. All right, we are actually going to try something new today. And instead of using a VirtualBox virtual machine, I'm actually going to record this using my capture card. And I'm installing Elementary OS on the laptop I have that is currently running Fedora 21. Um, as usually happens with me, I, I enjoy using Fedora 21. Nothing's wrong with it. But, you know, um, been there, done that, and it is time to move on to the next thing. So, hopefully I can get Elementary OS to mirror the screen over once we reboot into the installer here. Hopefully I can mirror the screen onto the capture card. Uh, it's not working too well so far. Whoa. Alright, we're going to unplug that for now. Alright, Elementary OS out of range. Well, it's sort of there. All right, sorry, the uh, initial boot screen is not going to be correct, but once we get into the operating system, then I'll be able to fix our settings here. And we set the second display to 1280 by 720. And that is the correct resolution for this to be using. So let's, let's do that, all right. We're just going to install in 720p because that's what seems to be working at this moment. So yeah, 720p video. Alright, I know it's 720p guys, but if you think about it, it's still probably better than the VirtualBox installation I did. So this is elementary OS. As you can see, it is supposed to mimic Mac OS to some degree. At the bottom of the screen, there is a dock, and at the top of the screen, there's our you know, just system bar. This is the Pantheon desktop environment, and the Pantheon desktop environment was forked from GNOME 3, but it is not just a plug-in, it's not just a layer over GNOME 3, it is an entire fork, so at this point Pantheon is completely separate from GNOME 3. So you can see the top left, we've got our applications menu here, uh, the middle we've got just a very simple, very compact calendar, I was surprised by how compact that was, and then at the top right we've got some icons with settings and things. We'll actually go ahead and connect to Wi-Fi. And um, yeah, at the bottom, like I said, we've got a dock. This is called Plank. I did get to play with Pantheon a little bit when I installed this on my main machine. I actually did install this on my main machine for like two seconds before I went to a different distribution. But yeah, we are going to install Elementary OS right now. So continue. Um, I, I think that since we're based off of Ubuntu here, since Elementary OS is based off of Ubuntu, I think that this is the Ubuntu installer, or, you know, based on the Ubuntu installer. So it is scanning our hard drives right now, and I can see the hard drive light going. So yeah, you guys will have to let me know if you prefer this or if you prefer a screencast of VirtualBox, because I did make this video using VirtualBox, Elementary OS does not work very well in VirtualBox because VirtualBox does not work very well with 3D graphics. And Elementary OS has lots of animations and transitions and things, which is really nice. You know, just these these fade-ins and things. Those don't work very well in VirtualBox. Um, but I felt bad. It seemed like it wasn't doing Elementary OS justice. So I thought, hey, I've got a laptop. I'll install Elementary OS on here. So I did notice, even on my main machine, it took a while to scan the hard drives. It should get there eventually, but it does take a little bit. All right, we are just going to erase disk and install elementary, but in case you're interested, if you want to save your home partition or do anything fancy, you can go into something else, and it works just like Ubuntu. So you can see you can encrypt the entire installation if you want. You can set up LVM. We're not going to do any of that. We're just going to install elementary OS because I've already backed up my files on my network alright so it's going to make an ext4 partition and it's going to make a swap partition so we'll just continue with that suggestion
All right, it's going to detect our time zone, and we are going to use Chicago. Next, it should ask, yep, for our keyboard layout, English US, and then your name, Jacob Kaufman, your computer's name, uh, Jacob Laptop. Jacob, super secure, password here, that's background noise, and continue. So this I thought was interesting. Most distributions have a slideshow at this point in the installation process. Most distributions are going to have a slideshow where they tell you about some of the programs that come with the distro. This one does not. This distribution just has a very small box that gives you progress, so copying files. And I also thought it was interesting, I would not have expected them to have a details view available. But as you can see, you can pop open a details view there. Uh, I can't really make it any bigger. But yeah, um, and then if you collapse, if you open or collapse this box, it does pop back to the center of the screen. Nice touch there. So yeah, I'll, I won't play with any of these applications until we're actually installed, because I know it won't go as fast as it will later. But yeah, no slideshow. Just sit back and watch the progress bar. All right, so after we've gotten done copying and downloading and installing everything, we get this box where we can either continue testing or, of course, we will choose to restart now. So we will wait for that to happen. And now the display is going to go a little weird once again. does not actually look like that. It looks better than that. All right, it says, please remove installation media and close tray and then press enter. I promise it really does say that. I'm not just making it up. So I'll take the USB flash drive out of the computer. Oh, wow, that doesn't look good. Hey, that looks better, doesn't it? So now we have full 1080p quality, really kicking it up here at Nerd on the Street. So this is the Pantheon desktop. We are completely installed, just in case you didn't catch that installation there. This is the Pantheon desktop environment. Clicking on the desktop and right-clicking on the desktop gives us nothing. At the bottom, we've got this dock, where, like I've said, we've got some stuff here. Uh, first thing we have is multitasking view. Now, like I said, this is not GNOME 3, so you know, ramming your mouse up into the top left like some sort of GNOME 3 Savage does not do anything. If you want to access multiple desktops, you have to go down here, click on multitasking view, and from there you can select um, different desktops. I guess it's not letting us do anything because we don't have any windows open. So it's like, why do you need more desktops if you don't have any windows open? But we'll look at that in a minute. Next we have Midori. And this is interesting that they ship Midori as their default web browser because most distros use Firefox these days some of them are switching over to Chromium Midori was created to fit in with the XFCE desktop environment but these days you usually don't see those smaller third-party browsers really included in distributions anymore you know you used to see Epiphany come with GNOME and KDE come with Conqueror but really most distributions strip those out at this point and put in more popular browsers but Midori does ship with elementary OS um, so it takes a little bit to load our page there. This is not the highest performance laptop, just so you know. Um, so we can, yeah, move this around. This is Midori. And looks like we do not have, this is weird, my trackpad is already set up for multi-touch scrolling, which I have never, I didn't know that this trackpad did multi-touch scrolling. I've never had that set up before. And it's also set up for natural scrolling, like on a Mac, where when you take two fingers and push them up, it scrolls the page down. When you take two fingers and pull them down, it scrolls the page up. So yeah, it already set that up for me. That's something that most distros make you do yourself if you want that. So that's kind of uh, different. And of course, Midori has you know multiple tabs and everything. So just to show what the multitasking view looks like, if we drag Midori over to... All right, we'll wait until we open the next thing. The email client is called Geary, and we can open that up. I'm not actually going to sign into my email on this. Now, what the heck, I'll sign into my email. Service, other, and I actually don't know all of that information offhand. So we are not going to sign into email right now, but I might do that later. Um, for now, I'd like to sign in to something. Here, why don't I do Outlook? because I think I know that password. Okay, let's add that. There we go. So my Outlook account works. And this is what Geary looks like. And now we can open up 
a multitasking view and drag Geary into its own virtual desktop. So you can see down here, most virtual desktops, well, I won't say that. In GNOME 3, um, virtual desktops, you see a thumbnail of the desktop. You don't see thumbnails in this multitasking view. You see the app that's open in that desktop. So it's clearly meant for one, only one or two apps per desktop. And yeah, so you can see, you know, this desktop, we've got mail open in. So I've got everyone's birthdays up here and some billing information. So that is clearly the best, least private things that I could have on the screen here. So let me just go into like spam. There we go. So you can see Gary. Uh, I'll show you something. You can see how this works. Um, it's actually a really nice email client. I've just never used it, but it's very simple. You know, a lot of people think, oh, email clients, that was for, like, last decade. We don't use email clients anymore. Most of us just use webmail. But Geary is a pretty nice email client just from the, the first impressions I'm getting here. We've got our folders on the left side, kind of like Apple Mail, folders on the left side. We've got a list of emails in the middle. And then on the right side, we have the email itself. So we can click on that and scroll through with that multi-touch scrolling. That's pretty nice. I think I might use that email client because normally I don't use an email client on my main computer but like I said this is for my laptop which I use for more personal things. Next up we have calendar and I'm not going to hook it up to any of my calendars right now but I might later. So when we have multiple apps open how does this work this multitasking view? Alright so it just shows both icons in there so that's interesting you can see this is our internet virtual desktop and this is our virtual desktop for mail and calendar right now. So once again, pretty nice. These are in-house applications. I think that Geary is developed in-house. I know for sure that calendar, music, videos, and photos are all developed in-house as well. Although I think that music, photos, and videos might be based off of some other applications. Maybe forked from some GNOME applications? Not sure. But yeah, you can see the calendar app here. Um, yeah, I can't go wrong with the calendar app, but then on the other hand, this is a pretty nice calendar app. So we can double click to add an event. You can set all of this metadata for the event, and um, if we just type something in in the title, create event, and then that's there. We can turn on different calendars. We can add a new calendar from some different sources, and so yeah, that's the calendar app. Though I was looking to see if I could do a different view because I like looking at the week view normally, but you can also see when you click on different days we've got a little agenda view on the right side over there and most of these apps also oh that's not actually a full screen button like it would be on Mac OS that would make the app full screen since the people making elementary OS actually don't hate us they don't make full screen buttons on all their programs instead they just make maximize buttons but it's got instead of a box it's got actual arrows that show you what the button does so you can see they pay attention to detail here at the top of the screen blends in with the wallpaper and the bottom of the screen obviously also blends in with the wallpaper when you maximize the dock goes away there and the dock looks like it's not transparent but translucent to a degree and then when you maximize things the top of the screen goes black so that actually looks really nice and once again all I'm looking for is a way to change our view here not seeing a way to change views but you know what that's okay maybe they don't believe in the week view that's alright we've got a month view and a day view that should be enough for everyone so the next app we'll look at is the music app once again the only reason I'm looking at these is because normally these are the same for every distro but these are actually developed in-house so our music app here there's no stores no music stores which is pretty pretty nice actually you can import music if you used to have an iTunes library or if you use Google Play you can just import music or you can um, load music from your music folder so let's say that you're switching from a Mac you install this on a Mac just put all your iTunes music into your music folder and it should pull it all in and I don't have any music on here right now so I can't really demonstrate that so we'll move on videos app no videos open. Once again, just a super simple videos app. And then photos app. I don't know who actually opens up videos from a videos app and photos from a photos app. Personally, I use the file manager for everything that I do. I open everything from the file manager. But if you're one of those people that likes to have different apps for different things, then 
you might appreciate some of this. You can organize your photos once again. They don't use, like, Shotwell. They, they don't use a pre-made photo app. They actually make their own that fits in with their desktop environment and fits in with all their other apps. You can see the Music app and the Photos app, very similar design because it's designed by the same group of people. So we'll open up a new virtual desktop. We'll see how many we can get going before we crash this laptop. Uh, we'll open up our system settings, and you can see when we open up apps, we do get blue dots underneath the icons on the dock. And once again, if I right-click, really all you get is some context menus for some things, like the web browser, you can do new tab. But other than that, you can choose to keep things in the dock or not to keep things in the dock. And you can also drag them around or drag them off, and now that will no longer be kept in the dock. It unchecked that. So this is our system settings. Looks pretty similar to Ubuntu system settings, but once again, you can tell that they've modified it a little bit to fit in with their desktop. So the same materials, making it up. I am impressed. You know, um, you don't get this level of detail with every Linux distribution. It's not going to make or break the experience for me. I'm not going to use this for my everyday thing. But if you're somebody who really cares about just how things feel, then I'm actually impressed just from my short time I've been using this. And then we've got the Ubuntu Software Center. This is going to do the laptop in. Hard drive light is going crazy here. So they are working on an app center specifically for elementary OS. And they've actually got some development platforms that developers can use that will make things basically that will work on elementary without working on Ubuntu. Not everybody likes that. But that's not out yet. So for now, anything that works on elementary OS can still theoretically work on Ubuntu. And of course, since elementary OS is based on Ubuntu 14.04 LTS, anything that you can get in the Ubuntu Software Center in those Ubuntu repositories, you can install on elementary OS. So like VLC or, why aren't the icons? That's weird, Chromium. Oh, that source isn't enabled yet. Well, might as well enable that, I'll be using it later anyway, so might as well enable the source. But yeah, we do just use the same Ubuntu software center that Ubuntu uses. If we go back to our system settings, we can see how the mouse and touchpad thing is. You can see we've got two-finger scrolling enabled, natural scrolling enabled by default. You can test your settings. I think that's the same as Ubuntu. And now we've got the... Well, we don't have the icon for Chrome, but we've got a screenshot for it and some other data for it. Alright, so that's the Ubuntu Software Center, nothing special there. Let's see if there's anything else we want to take a look at. Like I said, there's no longer a notification center on the right side of the screen like there used to be, but in the top left we've got an applications menu. I think we have an applications menu. Okay, applications menu is not opening right now, so that's interesting. Nope, Applications Mini definitely does not want to open at the moment. We do have a calendar in the middle like I said, and that calendar probably integrates with the calendar app that I just closed. So yeah, let's say we added our test event on Wednesday, so if we go to Wednesday, I think you can see it's a little bold there because there's an event on that day. So, and then we've got a shortcut to our time and date settings. And along the top right of the screen, like I already showed you earlier, I did test this music widget out when I had this on my main computer, and it does work as you would expect it to. We've got, not sure if you can hear that, but volume widget thing working. And yeah, um, notification, oh here's our notification center. I knew there was a notification center. It's that little thing right there, and you just... Well, really, I'm not sure what that's for. And we've got our power menu about this computer. It's got elementary OS on it. What do you know? 0 0.3 Freya, 64-bit. And here you can see the horrible, horrible hardware that I am doing this distro test on. Storage is decent-ish. So yeah, um, if I close the calendar, then I can drag things out of the dock. And I'm actually, I want to restart this computer and I want to open the applications menu because I want to show you how you go about adding new applications to the dock. 
So I guess they, they don't intend you to move your mouse, especially if you're on a laptop with a trackpad. You're not supposed to move your mouse all the way across the screen to this preview here. You're really just meant to um, click on the icon there, click on the option for the virtual desktop that you want down at the bottom of the screen here. So that's going to take some getting used to, but I get it. And yeah, and you could see since I had dragged that icon out of the dock earlier, as soon as I closed the web browser, uh, it went away. So I'm going to restart the computer real quick. And all right, now you can see the boot animation there sort of starting to spaz out, but oh, well, we've got our BIOS start up there. And there's the boot animation once again, how it is actually supposed to look. And in a moment, the logo might jump out of position for like half a second. Or maybe I'm just crazy. Looking like I'm just crazy. All right. Logo did not move. Here's our mouse. Here's what, well, this isn't really what this is supposed to look like. I think we're set to 720p right now, maybe. I don't know what the deal is. But, oh, no, it's mirroring my monitor. It's mirroring my display, which is just over 720p. But this is what the login um, page looks like. It's using light DM, just like Ubuntu is, but different theme, clearly. So if we log in, then we should get our video settings back. There we go. So now we can go up to the applications menu, and you can see what it looks like. So it fades in and out there. Not sure I'm a fan of the fade out animation, because it looks like it's kind of going toward here and not toward where you're clicking. But that has absolutely nothing to do with how good the OS is. So you can see we've got two views here. We've got icon view, that you can see large icons for everything. We have category view, and category view is always good to have. It is certainly easier to get to category view here than it is in GNOME. So you can click on like internet, you've got your internet, apps. If we go back into icon view, one thing that I thought was interesting is you cannot click and drag icons from here to the dock. You can't do that. If I release, maybe I can do that, but now my mouse is glitched out. Now my mouse is glitched out. Help. Help. This is not a capture card thing. That is the mouse glitching out right there. So I had thought that if you just drag something to the dock, it did not actually go to the dock. But looks like it does actually go to the dock. Or alternatively, let's say we want Archive Manager in the dock. We can open up Archive Manager, right click it, and click Keep in Dock. I think that the animation for the dock is pretty nice. Um, the balance is a little quick. I don't know. The only other thing I had to get used to was, let's say in the file manager, files. I think we're using a special file manager. I'm not sure what it's called. But see this, um, this like clock with the back thing in it? Yeah, that's for closed tabs. So like if I open a new tab, close the tab, now I've got a closed tabs thing. So that's interesting that they've got that. They've got like the same icon on their calculator. And then you've got history for your calculator. Normally that icon represents backup on a Mac. That looks pretty similar to the Time Machine logo. So I thought that would be for backup. Obviously you don't need to backup your calculator, but in your file manager, it took me a minute to adjust to that. Um, oh, the only other thing that I want to say is I am single clicking on these things. Hang on, why don't I fix the cursor? Because I know it doesn't bother me, but it probably bothers you guys. Here, why don't we try suspending and waking back up. There we go. We got our lock screen. And now the, the cursor is fixed. Okay, so you can see our notification there. Yeah, I don't know. I guess there's just no notification manager anymore, which is fine. Because, like, in GNOME, I hate how... I like the new notifications that come up at the top of the screen, but I hate how I have to go in and manually clear them. So I like that there's no real notification manager anymore. I'm not sure what this bell is for, but yeah. Um, one other thing I noticed in this file manager, the elementary OS file manager, whatever it's called, you single-click to open things. You single-click to open up your folders this is not a double click, it's just one click and it opens. And if I were to make a new empty file, single click and it opens up in 
What is this? This is some sort of, oh, it's called Scratch, looks like. And that is a text editor for Elementary OS. So Elementary OS does make a lot of apps for this, and that's nice if you're into that sort of thing. So like my main computer, I just use standard apps, so I wouldn't use any of this. But since this is my personal laptop, um, yeah, I might actually use some of these apps from time to time. But yeah, you do single click, sort of like older versions of Mac OS, I want to say. I want to say that's how some older versions, because newer versions you double click still, I think. But I think there were some older versions of Mac OS that you single clicked things in the Finder. If not, and I'm just making that up, then yeah, it's completely new. Com that they some I've seen that somewhere where you single click. Maybe KDE? Was it KDE that you used to single click things? Or you have the option to? I don't know. But yeah, single click to open in the file manager. So overall, this is getting to be a sort of moderately long video, which is fine. Overall, Elementary OS is a an interesting thing. Oh, you can see they made, look at these beautiful rounded displays, corners here. See how there's the little black dots in all four corners? Okay, they made such a big freaking deal about those rounded corners. I like the, every single interview that I've heard with these guys, they always mention those corners. Every single interview, every single blog post they make about this thing, they mention the corners. It's like it's just rounded corners. It's wasted pixels if you ask me. But yeah, they wanted to point out those rounded display corners because for some reason they think that you wish your display was rounded, even though I've never seen a display that is actually rounded. Most displays are rectangular, so, you know. But anyway, that was the only criticism I had, was how big of a deal they make out of those rounded display corners. In actuality, I don't mind the rounded display corners, and everything else is quite nice. I do think the only thing about this desktop environment that I've seen so far, and I don't know the keyboard shortcuts, so if there's keyboard shortcuts, that changes things. But just looking at this, especially since I was doing this review on a trackpad, but even when I had this on my main computer and using my mouse, since I have such a big screen, you really have to move your mouse around a lot in this desktop environment. Like if I want to go to my applications menu and then to my multitasking view to open up a new um, a new workspace, I have to go up to the top left, open up whatever program I want. I have to go all the way back down here to my multitasking view so I can drag that into a new workspace. And similarly, if I want to create a new workspace and open a new app, create a new workspace, bring my mouse all the way back up, create a new app. Is that actually going to like work? Oh, hey, look at that. Hi there. So yeah, overall, I think that that's a little laggy. Sorry if you don't like it. I think that elementary OS really is an interesting thing. I think that it's pretty nice. And if you're looking for a polished experience, I've heard a lot of good things about this. This is the first time I've used it to an extent. I'll tell you a little secret. Yeah, this is the first time I've actually spent more than five minutes using this. Because like I said, I used it for less than five minutes. That was not a joke. That was not an exaggeration. I installed this on my workstation. Five minutes later, I installed Ubuntu Mate and then four hours later or so I went back to Antergo slash Arch. So yeah, this is the first time I've really been able to try out Elementary OS and give it justice and actually be fair in my... It, this isn't even a review. This is not a review. This is just trying it out and this is, um, yeah, seeing what I think of it. And what I think is I heard a lot of good things about this, this operating system, and it lives up to most of them. It's very simple. So if you if you need a simple, you know, next time I install Linux for someone, I think I'm going to try installing this, which obviously I'm going to play with it some more so I know if it's got any big quirks or anything. But right now, when I install Linux for someone, my go-to beginner distro um, is Linux Mint. It's not my recommended distro. My recommended distro for people who know how to use a computer is actually Ubuntu Mate at this time. But for people like, like for my parents, if my parents were to let me switch them to Linux right now, and right now they are on a Mac, I managed to switch them from a Windows XP machine to a Mac at least, but if they were to let me switch them to Linux, I would recommend to them Linux Mint as the easiest to use Linux distro. But at this point, Linux Mint is a really nice distro still, but I think this it has a little bit more polish. I think it's a little lighter, 
based on what I've seen so far. This is running pretty darn well and like I said, not the best um, hardware. The animations are pretty smooth and it's simple. You know, Linux Mint, there's menus everywhere in Cinnamon. And this, the only menu is just this like tiny applications menu. You can't really screw this thing up. Um, you can't really get confused about your multitasking view here once you figure out the basic usage of it. So elementary OS is definitely the simplest Linux distribution, the simplest effective Linux distribution I have ever seen so far, I think. I don't think I've seen a desktop environment this simple before, other than maybe on Pear OS, which was discontinued like a year ago. So yeah, I'm excited to try this out more. Uh, maybe I'll post on the forums about it at forums .nerd on the no, it's just nerdonthestreet.com at this point. Screwed up my own plug. But yeah, maybe I'll post on the forums at nerdinthestreet.com um, about this once I use it for a couple more weeks. But that was just installing elementary OS on a physical machine and trying it out for about half an hour on a physical machine. Because like I said, I installed this in VirtualBox. It did not do very well at all. So I'm glad that I did this because I now have a much higher a much higher understanding of why people like this distribution so much so yeah thank you guys so much for watching let me know what your experiences are with elementary os freya this has been a long time coming but they're still only on version 0.3 so let me know what you think if you do like this project a lot and you actually use this on one or more of your computers you know consider donating to them it's not a necessity to donate to them but if there's specific features you'd like to see then I'm sure you can send in a note with your donation I bet they have that set up it seems like a common sense thing so yeah that is all for this video that is elementary OS version 0.3 Freya for now I'm Jacob Kaufman I'm there in the street and I will see you guys in the next video bye